Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, where we discuss all sorts of things Germanic heathenry related. My name is Jesse. I am your host. Let's get into it. Hello, welcome back everyone. Hail and well met to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, returning back in full force after yet another week-long hiatus. Um, if you guys follow me on social media, um, you know, mainly Facebook, Instagram, I try to keep up with Twitter, but Twitter doesn't seem to get the same level of interaction. Um, so if you follow me there, you don't see much. I don't know what to tell you. I'm not a social media master when it comes to keeping track with everything. I do all I can to um, <clears throat> try to stay in the relevant news feeds on Facebook, Instagram, and uh, YouTube mainly. Uh, but if you guys follow me on my socials, uh, you knew last week I, um, I took a week off because I went to the beach. I went to Gulf Shores, Alabama with my, my, with, uh, my wife and uh, spent the week down there. We actually um, spent some time with our tribal Gothi, Ulf. Uh, him and his mom went down there. And it was a very spontaneous uh, decision to, to go at the same time that they did. It actually stemmed from the conversation um, that we all had over here at <clears throat> our house, my wife's and I house. And um, yeah, he was talking about how he was going to be taking a week uh, vacation down there, um, you know, the week following Memorial Day, so not Memorial Day weekend, but they were going to be getting down there on Memorial Day uh, Monday and spending that week into the first few days of June. And, you know, it started off as, hey, you know, Vanessa, would you like to go? And I said, yeah, baby, you should go. Um, and it, it, it just kind of snowballed into we're both going. And uh, it started off as we're going to stay a couple of days, and then it turned into we're gonna we're gonna stay pretty much the whole week. We ended up getting down there late on Monday, and we left early, um, not really early, but we left Friday um, <clears throat> afternoon. And it was a much needed break. Um, let me tell you guys. Um, so, as most of you probably know, if you have been following me now, <clears throat> excuse me, I need to take a drink of water because for some reason my throat is a bit dry. That's rude. Uh, that's the other thing too is is like allergies or, or something is um, been kicking my tuchus or my tush, or my buttocks here lately. Keeping it you know PG for the kiddos. Um, <clears throat> but anyways, uh, if you guys have been following me, you know that um, back in April my father passed away. Um, I was away for uh, a duration because of that, and then. You know, I don't know, it's just all of that and then coming back and getting into the swing of things with like work and and whatnot. I, I never really had time to just decompress and find a place to really and truly disconnect from everyday life, you know, social media and stuff like that. I know you guys follow me on, on, on Facebook and, and Instagram and, and YouTube and Twitter and all that. And I, and I try to share some things just to keep, you know, things relevant, but, uh, you know, no podcast last week, um, very little content, uh, in, in general. Um, and that was really what I needed. You know, I, I really just needed to sit on a beach and, Enjoy the water, enjoy it. Listen, listen to music, have some drinks. You know, uh, that beach life, dude, is, is like I can go out here to the river and go out into the, into the woods and it's a different kind of, I don't know, it's a different kind of experience. The, the, the elements, the, 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 the forces of nature, the, the spirits that exist by the sea and in the sea are different than what exists here in a landlocked state. Um, not in a bad way, just a different way. And it was so healing and it was so wholesome, you know, to be able to 
spend several days with a kinsman, with my wife, and just enjoy it. Not have it like nobody cared about what time it was. You know, yeah, sure, we wanted to get up early to get a nice spot on the beach and 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 whatnot. But uh, there was no like, oh, I've got to do this at a certain specific time. You know, no no deadlines, no nothing like that. And and it was great. So it was much needed to just de- again decompress, disconnect, recharge. Um, so we're back now. We're back here. Uh, to to, uh, to 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 podcast again, and we've got a good one lined up today. I hope. Uh, but before we get into the topic, um, I do want to get some sort of housekeeping things out of the way. Um, here in a, about a week or so, week and a half, I guess. Well, less than a week and a half. But coming up here soon uh, is the Raven Moon Hearth hosted event. Suna Bloat. They hold this every year. And it is their midsummer uh, public event um, that is hosted by Raven Moon Hearth in Springfield, Tennessee. I'm going to be linking the details for that in the description and show notes of this podcast. So as I say with every event that's happening in our area, please check it out if you're relatively close uh, or you haven't heard about it yet and you want to make that trip. Um, It is a one-day event. It's a Saturday event. Uh, sort of thing. So, you know, come in, uh, I think the doors, as it were, open, or you can arrive by 10 a.m. And there's going to be, um, you know, there, there's a there's a ticket entry fee, and it's an all-day thing. So you're going to get lunch, you're going to get dinner, you're going to have classes to listen to about, you know, talking about um, the, the, the midsummer time of year or solstice time of year. Um, there's going to be ritual, there's going to be games, there's going to be fellowship, there's going to be all kinds of fun stuff. Um, so, and then <clears throat> after the ritual, there'll be usually like fireside, fellowship, drumming, whatever. Um, so definitely <clears throat> check that out in the description and or uh, podcast show notes. And come out and uh, hang out with uh, some heathens and pagans in the area. Um, following that event, we are also going to be hosting an outdoor potluck picnic or, or barbecue sort of thing. Um, when I say we, I'm talking about my tribe. Hilary the Folk. And so that's going to be in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. And details for that will also be linked in the description and show notes of this podcast. And that's just essentially a chance for folks who are looking to maybe find a heathen kindred in the area, tribe slash kindred, use those terms somewhat interchangeably. Um, come out and meet us, get to know who we are. Um, very, very small at the moment, but not looking to necessarily recruit, but looking to put ourselves in the public eye and uh, give people a chance to learn what we're about, you know, what our our, our vision is as, as a Germanic heathen tribe and uh, what we're about and just so in, enjoy some good food, you know. Uh, it's, it's in a sheltered pavilion, so you don't have to worry about um, rain or anything like that. It's probably going to be warm. But, hey, that's Tennessee for you, right? It's, it's Tennessee in June. Uh, and, you know, I always, I always get a kick out of people. And I've been one of them, too. You know, I, I, I am definitely not the type of person that enjoys the heat. <laughs> I, am, I am a Northman by blood. I was born and raised in, in the state of New York, you know. And so that, that cold blood, as it, as, it, as it were, definitely runs through my veins. And in this oppressive, hot, humid, you know, boggy, swampy type weather that Tennessee is is famous for this time of year is definitely not up my alley. Um, but in the same token, I'm like, there's so many events that end up happening um, when weather is not perfect. You know, either it's very cold, very hot, stormy, you know, rainy, whatever. And, and pagans don't come out to these things. And I'm like, wait a minute, you guys are all about nature, you know, nature-based religion, this, that, and thing, and the other. Uh, and yet you won't come out and experience the forces of nature and, 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 and connect with people in that sort of way. It's kind of odd. You, you may, you may want to rethink your lives there, my friends. Um, not scolding you, but I'm just giving you some things to think about. You know, we are, we are uh, people of the land. <laughs> and uh, nature is, is a big part, a central part of our belief systems in, in many different people's lives and in, in many different ways. But, it, you know, we don't live on this earth 
We're not just on this earth. We are this earth. We are people of this earth. You know, we're not living on the earth. We are living of the earth. We are part of her. Experience her and all of her bipolar glory. You know, when it's hot, when it's cold, when it's raining, when it's sunny, when it's, you know, this, that, and the other. Experience it. So come experience it with us. Come experience it with pagans and, and heathens in the area for Sunabloat coming up here just this weekend after next. And then uh, the Clearly Folk Potluck Meetup here in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, the weekend. Uh, I believe it's the weekend after that. So great stuff happening in the area uh, to hopefully get people out and meeting one another and networking and all that fun stuff. So there's the housekeeping stuff. As always, if you want to know uh, all the ways that you can support this channel, this podcast, the Linktree link that's always annotated down here uh, in the description and show notes is your one-stop shop for all the ways that you can support Midgard Musings, the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast as a whole, all that fun stuff. So check it out, follow, like, share, subscribe, you know, do those things. Um, <clears throat> so now that we've got the housekeeping stuff out of the way, um, got our candle lit, got some sandalwood incense going, and we are going to be talking today a uh, viewer slash su subscriber slash supporter request. Because uh, again, as, I tell, as I've told you before, um, so much of what the topics that this podcast um, gets comes from the listeners and the viewers and, and your ideas and your suggestions are being heard. And I log them down and I write them down and I share them, you know, over here. Because the mirror, the, the, the camera is mirrored. So I'm like, you know, my right is your left and my up is your down. So over here, right here, you're going to see Morgan's request. So thank you, Morgan, for this request, who said, would you be annoyed if we discussed Loki again as a deity? You've talked about it before, but having recently dismissed him from my pantheon in favor of Odin, I would be down to listen to thoughts about his origins again, etc., etc. So Morgan, um, definitely not annoyed by the topic, although I, I definitely am a, a bit biased <clears throat> when it comes to any discussions around Loki. So for those of you that are listening and watching, if you if you if you are uh, I don't know more inclined to be the type of, of heathen or pagan that is a Lokian or a Roka true, as they are called sometimes. You know, the, the, the types of pagans who like to um, really focus on uh, the, the, the monsters or the chaotic forces as described in Norse mythology. Um, this episode might ruffle your feathers. It might tickle your toes. It might fluster your femurs. I don't know. I'm, I'm stretching here. Uh, or, or reach in here with, when it comes to the, the euphemisms. But you get it. Um, I am biased when it comes to stuff about Loki. Um, I'm not opposed to talking about it because I love the dialogue that can circulate after such discussions. You know, I love the the the, the backs and the forths and the ups and the downs and the lists and the that. So, um, Loki, would I be uh, upset or annoyed to talk about Loki? Well, it's not about me, right? It's about you. And it's about everybody else that's listening and watching. So we're going to ramble about it for the next however long. We're going to ramble about Loki and his origins and such. Um, but it's interesting um, because Morgan's comment um, kind of is, a, is you know, the, the type of a comment that would, for somebody listening to it or, or, or asking about it in real time, you know, elicit some more probing questions. You know, why would you dismiss Loki from your pantheon, first of all. Why was he there in the first place? You know, what was it about Loki that gave you the inclination to want him to even be a part of your practices at all, you know? And uh, so I think the topic about Loki, what we're going to do today is we're going to maybe cover some common misconceptions, um, especially for newer heathens that may find themselves thinking about the various gods and goddesses in uh, the Norse pantheon and um, where they would, you know, have a place in your practices, in, in your 
spirituality or religi religiosity, whatever. And so, um, <clears throat> and once again, the, the bias is going to be palpable. I, I think you're going to, you know, it's, it's going to be easily detected, <laughs> my bias about it. Um, so I have way, way, way back um, on, on the Midgard Musings YouTube channel, uh, I used to do deity discussion videos every so often, and um, Loki was one of the first ones that I did. And, uh, you know, for anyone that's interested, I'm going to link it up here, down there, wherever. It's going to be annotated, you know, in the show notes description. There might even be a card that's up in the upper right corner of this video, if you're watching it on YouTube, about my deity discussion video or to a link to that video. Um, it is dated. The quality is not the greatest, so fair warning in advance. Um, apologies. Um, I was doing the best I could with what I had at the time um, to talk about them. And, um, but not much has changed in terms of my views on Loki and his um, presence in pagan practices, my pagan practices, right? Mm -hmm. that, that, that much really hasn't changed. So some common misconceptions. I think... Um, one of the big things that ends up happening is people who are new to heathenry that come into this path uh, or find themselves interested, it appeals to them, they want to pursue it. You know, they look at the gods as um, separate, uh, you know, separate forces, separate beings that, that need to have a place in your worship and your veneration, you know, you have to find a place for Odin, you have to find a place for Thor, you have to find a place for Loki, for example, right, since we're talking about, uh, since we're talking about Loki today. Um, and, and one of the things that, that I think people will sometimes take with them into this path is they'll, 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 they'll take pop culture ideas or pop culture um, perceptions uh, of, of these particular gods and, and uh, use that as their as as their fuel to to, to pursue the, the the interest in it. So, one thing that w one should always remember uh, in terms of the historical um, side of, of of this practice is we don't see Loki or 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 similar figure in where the Germanic heathenry originated in continental. Europe, in, in, the, in Saxony, in, in, in continental lands, you know, in the mainland Germanic countries, there, were, there was no equivalent to what is known now as Loki. Loki was something that happened um, later on in Scandinavia, in, in, in the north. So um, <clears throat> that's one thing to, to bear in mind, is there's no you know, really historical spot where, where Loki even exists, um, unlike the gods like Freyr, unlike the gods like Odin, Thor, Njord, Nerthus, what have you. You know, these are figures that we see um, coming from the south up to the northern Scandinavian countries later on. Loki's not there um, originally. Loki pops up um, in, in the Eddas. And um, so that's, that's one thing to bear in mind. Another thing to bear in mind is who Loki actually is, you know? I think pop culture has, um, n you know, created this perception of Loki as a, as a, uh, a trickster, you know, and a, a, a malevolent sort of figure, um, almost a Satan-like, as, as it were. We're going to get into that here in a minute, too. Um, and that he is... Uh, Thor's brother, and that he is the son of, of Odin. Thanks, Marvel. Um, but no, <laughs> no, he's not. Um, if anything, Thor and Loki's relationship in the Eddas, in the mythology, in those stories, um, Loki is more of a companion type. He, he, he accompanies Thor on a lot of his uh, escapades and a lot of his journeys where you know Thor has to go do something and Loki is right there with him relationship wise he is not Thor's brother he is not Odin's son um, 
he is partic- he is specifically uh, the, the 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 son of Jotun or Jotnar, and um, if you want to take a take a you know stretch out like relationships wise, you know we we hear um, made mention in in the poem the Lokasena, which is in the poetic edda. Uh, Loki reminds Odin that they are have sworn an oath of a blood kinship. They are sort of like blood brothers. They mingled their blood. And, and, and swore an oath. Um, and so if you want to consider the fact that Odin and Loki are more like blood brothers um, than anything, it would sort of, you, again, you could, you, you could make the, uh, the stretch that, that if anything, Loki is kind of like Thor's uncle, <laughs> which is weird. Um, but anyway, uh, he's, he's, he's a companion. He, he's, he's accompanied... Thor in uh, the retrieval of his hammer, you know, because he had to uh, be Thor as Freya, right? Freya's handmaiden, so he had to accompany Thor on that. He 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 accompanied Thor uh, on on the uh, the journey to Utgard or Loki. It's an interesting story too, because um, it it also kind of changes the perception of, of Loki as, as being this god associated with fire. We're going to get to that in a second, um, which he's not. Um, so there we go. We, we, we got that couple of, those couple of misconceptions out of the way. He's, he's definitely not a uh, historically attested figure in the ancient Germanic sources. He only appears later on um, in, in the Scandinavian myths. Um, he is not Thor's brother or Odin's son. Um, he is not a god associated with fire anywhere. Um, now, why is that? Why, why have a lot of uh, folks come, that have come into heathenry or, or into this path? Uh, why, when we look up images, even on the thumbnail of this video, you know, yes, it's an AI-generated uh, image, but, but it's like you look at images all over the place of of Loki, and quite often we see this, you know, sort of dashing, um, you know, sort of gender fluid looking individual uh, with fiery red hair or, or fire in, in their eyes, and it's just fire all around them, you know, very fire, a big fire motif going on with, uh, with the modern representation of Loki. Um, <clears throat> so there's, there's, I think uh, I think Jackson Crawford and even Ocean Keltoy talk about this in, in some of their videos. If you want to look up, you know, Jackson Crawford on YouTube, Ocean Keltoy on YouTube, YouTube, and just use the search terms, you know, Loki, Jackson Crawford, Loki, uh, Ocean Keltoy. You're gonna find some of their videos uh, wherein um, it was, I think, of uh, uh, Grimm, who Jacob Grimm, uh, if I'm not mistaken who has something, to, uh, some sort of book or something that, that uh, Germanic mythology or German mythology or something, and then there's a mention in, in that about Loki and fire. But even Grimm's sources are from somebody who's not, uh, it, it's not reputable or it doesn't have any really true historical backing. It's, it's, it's more just, I guess, maybe folklore or, or just conjecture. But... Suffice it to say, um, Loki is not a god associated with fire. Really, none of the Norse gods are, none of the Germanic gods are. They're not, you know, sure, you might th- say that, you know, Thor is a, a god of thunder, but he's also a god of war, you know. Um, but it's, it's, it's really not accurate to place the gods and, and make them just the god of one thing or another, you know what I mean? Um, pretty nuanced in that way. So, and what, why is Loki looked at as, as a god associated with fire? And, and I think we can all reach the same conclusion that um, uh, Loki sometimes gets confused with a Jotun called Logi, who is um, a, a challenger um, in the story where Thor and Loki travel to Utgard Loki and they they are faced with all of these various challenges and this one time in that story Loki is pitted 
in a eating battle against Logi. And uh, the, the the challenge is, you know, who can out eat the other, you know. So they, they start each at one end of the table and they, they consume as much as they can. They end up meeting in the middle and, and where Loki consumes all of the food on the table and meets Logi, his challenger, right, the, the, the opposer, uh, at the same time in the middle. The difference is that Logi has consumed literally everything, the tables, the chairs, the plates, everything, whereas Loki only has consumed the food that was on the table. Um, and, it come, and, and as we come to find out, what Loki was pitted against or who was Loki battling was Logi. Logi is, the meaning is fire, because fire is all-consuming, and, 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 it, and it consumes everything in its path. Um, and, and Loki's name, Loki, is, isn't even a word that means fire or, or consumer. If anything, it, it means something more like closer. Um, I think it's the word Loki is, is where we get our English word lock from. It's cognate. Um, with our modern English word, lock. <clears throat> so uh, he's, he's, you know, not a god of fire, really, of any, you know, something like that. Um, he's not Thor's brother. And all these various uh, misconceptions of his origins is, is in, in stuff. And, and we, would, we don't see where his origins came from, except from where he pops up in the, the in Snorri's, uh, Eddas, you know, the, well, not just Snorri, but of course the poetic Edda, which is a, you know, a compilation of different poems, and then Snorri Sturluson's prose Edda, which is the, you know, more like, I don't know, prose fashion of those myths. So anyway, there's his origin, or, or lack thereof, uh, stories. And I don't, because I don't have an interest in, in, having a place for him in my personal practices, and I definitely don't have a place for him in a large-scale um, sort of practice when it comes to, like, tribal or, or kindred-level um, rituals and stuff like that. I'm not too keen on really pursuing more of that, but the the, the history side of it is is, is pretty cool, so um, there, there is that. But... Uh, Dismissing Loki from one's pantheon, you know, it, it does. It bears the question as to why. Why would you feel inclined to start with them as, as part of your practice and then realize that, get out, buddy, I, that we got no place for you here? Um, that's an interesting question. And, you know, I, again, going back to what I said in the beginning about folks who may be listening or watching that are... Lokian type pagans, or that are what would be referred to as Roka true, uh, which are again the, the the types of folks that um, find a place in their practices to venerate Loki's children, Jormungandr, Fenrir, Hel, you know, uh, and Loki himself. These entropic sort of chaotic forces that exist in in the myths that uh, have have more to do with undermining or or trying to destroy order the chaos um, there's 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 plenty of that you know what I mean like that's just nature in in general there there's always things there's there's rot that exists in nature there is that that constant circle of life and death we are we are part of that we are part of this earth as I mentioned before we are a part of that cycle we have to die for new life to be you know allowed as it were and, and there's that cyclical existence that we're all a part of that we cannot escape um, so why would you know, again, the bias is going to come through. Why would anyone want to consciously put their their energy, their focus, their devotion, their veneration into specifically the 
elements of nature that seek to destroy or that are just inherently entropic and that have no other purpose to serve than to be that thing. I don't get it. I've never gotten that. Um, some might say, and I, you know, I've talked to, to, to folks who at one point in time kept a very devotional uh, approach to, to Loki in their practices. You know, they looked at him as this necessary evil, maybe, or, or the, the, the necessary chaos, kind of like uh, the, the rune meaning of, of Hagalaz or Hagal, you know, the hailstone. That violent force of nature that destroys and does things in order to in, uh, instigate a new life or, or instigate something that is needed in that moment, you know. So kind of like the, the, those forest fires that, that are started to purposely burn down acres of, of land so that way the dead and dying uh, you know, pieces of, of, of nature that need to go, can go, and be forced to, to nurture that, that new life. Something kind of like along those lines, right? That, that, that necessary force um, and, and trying to embrace that concept or, or be a part of that process, I guess, um, is one way of looking at it. Um, but uh, I don't know, man, like that's, we're already a part of it just inherently, you know, like it's, you, know, you don't have to seek to, to, to gift to that, to, to try to perpetuate that. I don't know, you're not perpetuate, not the right word, but to, again, just, I don't know, fuel that, give, give attention to that. It's, it's already there and it's going to be there and there's nothing you can do about it. Um, and I also, uh, again, the bias, you know, I also don't want anything to do with Loki uh, in my personal practices or in my tribal practices. We have a pretty, you know, pretty strict rule that uh, as a tribe, when we gather for tribal events, there will be no hailing of Loki. There will be no Loki veneration um, in our rituals because the the our our tradition our our view of 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 Loki is that he is a kinslayer and he is an oath breaker in this to the degree that uh uh he's always lying you know he's sure they may seem like small lies but he he's he's ultimately the the inciter of Ragnarok when i say insider i mean like inciting not insider like behind the scenes but he incites Ragnarok because what he did with Balder, you know, by by tricking Holder into throwing that uh, that that fatal arrow of mistletoe. Um, that's what starts the whole Ragnarok thing in the myths, you know. And he is the force that fights against the Aesir in Ragnarok, you know. Him and his his children, Fenrir and, and Jormungandr, right? These are forces that are enemies of, of, of the Aesir, of the gods. And so in the myths, you know, um, we, we, we look at that as, as a thing of, well, we don't want to, him to be a part of our ritual. Now, an interesting thing to to realize, right, is that so much of what we learn about in the, the myths of the gods' powers, their magical items, have been acquired or come to them due to Loki's behavior, Loki's actions, Loki's involvement. You know, he is the reason why Thor has his hammer, and he's also the reason why Thor got his hammer back. You know, he was an influential he was an influential component in getting his hammer back when it was stolen from him, and he was the very reason why he got it in the first place. Same way with uh, Odin's spear, Glaupnir, and his uh, his ring, Draupnir, 
you know, um, uh, so you're kind of like you owe it to Loki in a way, the, or, you know, the gods owe it to Loki in a way, um, as, as to, you know, uh, why they have their things, why they have their, their mythical, magical items that they've come to kind of be known by, you know, uh, was it, uh, Sif's golden hair, you know, that's another one, uh, sure, you know, he's the reason why it was cut off in the first place, but then he's the reason why she's got her golden hair after, you know, making it right or, or, or fixing the, uh, the wrong that he did. He's, you know, the reason why Asgard has their, their, their citadel, their, their, their fortress, the wall that, that guards the place, you know, like he's the reason why the giant's horse got distracted <laughs> and uh, they, you know, were able to get their wall built and, and not have to surrender, surrender Freya for it. You know what I mean? So, yeah, he does these things in the myths and, and he's responsible for so much crap, right, that he has to come in and, and, and figure out the solution. And he, and he does. He, he pulls through. Um, but it's kind of like at the end of it all, all the good that, that happened from his involvement cannot be, um, you know, it, it cannot be overshadowed by what he, what he is ultimately responsible for at the end. You know, it's like, yeah, sure, you did all this good stuff, but look at what you've done now. Um, or you've done all these things that have benefited us now, but you just kind of screwed the pooch um, and, and, and all of us in the process. And so, you know, he is he was outlawed. He was cast out. And looking, looking at that from the perspective of society at the time, you know, that was how problems were, were handled. They, you know, you did certain things, you were considered needing. You, you were you were cast out you were an outlawed and so it's no surprise that he's put that way and portrayed that way in the myths because again of the the sort of societal structure at the time and, and the way thing the way the world was for the people at that time and how their stories reflect that you know so um, if you guys are, Lokians, or if you have a place in your practice for Loki, I'd be really interested. I'm sure others listening and watching would be, would be interested uh, to know why as well. Um, even considering the fact that, you know, my tribe's name, you know, our name is Thuridhi Folk, Thunderer, Thuridhi, the people of the Thundering Storm. Um, a, a huge nod to Thor. Um, and, and as I mentioned before, even though Loki is with Thor on many of his travels and, and in the stories he is there as a companion, uh, we still do not and will not have a place for Loki in our tribal affairs and our tribal rituals. It just won't ever happen because, again, of what ultimately he's responsible for. It's like, yeah, you've done all those things, but look what you are ultimately responsible for, and we're not, that's our, that's our custom, that's our tradition. That's what we've adhered to and what we're going to adhere to. That is our Thu. You know what I mean? That's one thing that won't change. Even though Thu and, and, and tradition can, can evolve or change over time, that, that's one thing that is not going to change. It's, it's been embedded into our bylaws, right? It's, it's been written down <laughs> to be remembered for the next generation, uh, whoever, wherever, uh, Hilarity folk goes from here. So, um, but yeah, as, you know, as I said before, I'm always interested to hear what other people's, uh, perceptions are. Morgan specifically, because, you know, you're the one that, that asked this, um, or, or suggested this topic weeks ago. And while I am not annoyed at all to talk about it, I am deeply interested to know your background as to why 
he was there in the first place and why he no longer is there, why he was, why you've disassociated from him, uh, him from your from your practices, if you're willing to to talk about it, and anybody else for that matter, if you want, feel free to comment down below, write into the podcast, MidgardMusingsTN at gmail.com, call in and leave a voicemail, it's uh, 615-671-9832, hotline is always open, you can always call, just leave a voicemail and we'll feature you on the podcast if you want, um, but your responses or your comments would be appreciated, because uh, it adds more to the story, you know, it adds more to the to the topics, and um yeah, Loki, he's just, you know, remember that one time he went to Aegir's Hall and, and killed Aegir's servant to get in and then tries to throw up in Odin's face and hey, by the way, remember, bro, we mixed our blood that one time. We were, said you'd never have a drink without me. And then Odin's like, yeah, okay, whatever. I don't like it, but I got to do it because I have this oath that I'm supposed to keep. And then he starts just insulting the gods left and right. Remember that? And while there is some truth to some of the things that he insulted them for, um, it's better to take away from the fact that he just essentially, you know, ruined the party, killed the guy's servant that's hosting the party, and then just comes in and, and starts lambasting everybody. And the only one that could stop it, and the only one that he would listen to was who? His companion, his his traveling buddy, right? His his nephew, <laughs> if you want to, again, stretch it on that way, uh, Thor. You know, it took a little while, but finally Thor is like, listen here, buddy, this hammer that I have because of you, I'm about to sink it into your freaking head. You don't know, shut up and get out of here. He's like, all right, fine, whatever. I'm, I'm, I'm out of here. This party sucks anyway. <laughs> you know? Um, this party's lame. Going to party with uh going to party in Niflheim. <laughs> Who knows? I don't know. I'm just making fun now. But yeah. Um Loki, not the brother of Thor. Loki, not the fire god or god of associated with fire. Loki, not the trickster. Sure, he's tricky, can be tricky, but so can Odin. So can a lot of the gods. You know, there's a lot of a lot of things about the gods that, you know, and that's the other thing, too, is, is people want to look to the gods as, like, well, if the gods did it, then what's what's wrong with us doing it? It's like, hey, man, like, the gods aren't fallible, or infallible, I should say. They are fallible. And they're, the stories are not there to, for us to, you know, mirror their behaviors 100% of the time there's there's a lot to learn from if you want to take that angle and there's a lot to you know take away from their their behaviors and realize that it, that that wasn't good you know when when Thor and Odin was it uh Harbard you know Odin is as Harbard is, is disguised as that old man, and, and Thor doesn't realize who it is, and they're going back and forth, and Odin's basically bragging about how, you know, he forced himself on these, uh, on this woman or these women, and he's like, Thor, you should have been there and, and helped me hold them down and all. Like, that's not cool, man. That, that is deplorable. That is terrible behavior. Don't, don't use that story or, or that particular line of a story and be like, well, see, you know, that's why it's okay to have your way with people and, and, and not respect boundaries because look at Odin, like, mm-mm, you know, not at all. And so that's with all the gods. That's with all of those uh, figures, you know, and, and while they have a place as, as sacred beings, they, you know, reading these stories the myths about them and, and realizing their tendencies and, and, and stuff. It's, it's, it's a learning experience, you know. It's, it's, it's not just ways to be, it's ways to not be. So, Loki is just another one of them. I think there's, there's things about Loki's character that we read about in the stories that one could say for, in the right context, are admirable and are 
upstanding kind of characteristics. You know, he definitely gets things done. He's witty. He's, you know, he's, he's, got, he's got that quick on his feet sort of thinking in, in, a, in a lot of ways. Um, he's definitely knows that to fix a problem, you've got to bring a lot to the table to, to, to do it. It's, you know, big problems result in big solutions. So, uh, you know, again, you can take, you can nitpick, you can cherry pick things out of, of all cases, of all the gods uh, that we have stories about at least. And there are several of them that, that Loki is involved in. Again, he's, he's one of the primary characters in, in the Ragnarok myth, you know, and he's, and he's mentioned a lot throughout the Eddas in the, in, in the various poems, so... Yeah, I'm I'm genuinely curious uh, for for those of you that either are still Lokian, like why what is what is it about Loki that makes you want to put your focus and your energy into him or his offspring specifically, um, and for those that maybe were and are no longer, you know what was your what was the turning point for you? Uh, why did you decide as Morgan had? Uh, to dismiss Loki from your practices. So, that is today's episode. That is our discussion on Loki. There may be more. We don't know. If you want to hear more about Loki, you have something specific about Loki that you want to talk about, maybe you want to be on the podcast, again, write in. Write into the podcast, MidgardMusingsTN at gmail.com. I'm always interested in having guests Um on the podcast to to rap about things and ram, ramble on about things. So if you want to be on this podcast and talk about it some more with me, just write in and uh, we'll, we'll we'll pursue that. We'll we'll talk about that. So uh, thank you so much for listening today, guys. Thank you again for being here, even throughout all the things that have been going on in my life to where I'm not posting every week or I'm not sharing an, an episode every week. Um, I know you guys enjoy the weekly episodes. Uh, sometimes it's just not possible, but uh, I do appreciate your consistent return and, and and being here each and every time that I do upload new content. Um, it means a lot. So please check out in the description the link tree link that's posted there for all the ways that you can support this podcast now and going forward. Just like, follow, share, subscribe. All that stuff is free. And then there are other monetary ways that you can support. You can become a patron on Patreon. You can join the channel as a member. You can buy merchandise, which is cool because you actually get something tangible, something physical that you can support the brand and support uh, yourself because you got some new swag. You got some new threads looking sharp out there. You know, people wonder, what's that? Oh, it's Midgard Music. Check them out. Boom. All right, walk in advertisement. Plus, you look great doing it. So check it out. It's all down there in the link tree link. And, uh, Yes, thank you especially to my patrons. I mentioned Patreon before. Um, a special thanks to my patrons because you guys are the real superstars and you do a lot to help keep this channel and this and this podcast going. So I genuinely appreciate and a special thanks to all of you. So until we see each other again on the next episode of the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, thank you so much. May the gods, even Loki, continue to notice you and may your ancestors smile upon you. See you next time.